On today's show, Steven Spielberg will be directing a comic book movie. We get the final trailer for Jurassic World. And will the Silver Surfer appear in Infinity War, or will he be yodeling at Walmart? Movie Talk starts right now. What is he yodeling at Walmart? Yodeling at Walmart. The, the Walmart yodeler kid was at Coachella. He got a gig at Coachella. You guys see but that? He is, and he's Silver Surfer? And like, he was is he the a... Silver Surfer. A That's lot amazing. of breaking news Incredible. to get to today. Not the least yeah. of which is that Christian Harloff had successful face-off surgery, and now he looks exactly like Mark Riley, although it is the same Star Wars. Harloff. We yeah. know Star Wars. Love. That is John Schnapp. <laughs> that is Mark Riley joining us here for a couple segments. I am Mark Ellis, and we kick off with the news that the Russo brothers haven't really confirmed or denied the fact that the Silver Surfer will be appearing in the upcoming Infinity War. They did have some interesting things to say when asked about the appearance of Silver Surfer because obviously the Silver Surfer is one of these Fox properties that we can't quite get in the movie just yet. At least we can't say you're in the movie, but maybe we could hint at you being in the picture or joining the MCU at some point because the Disney Fox deal could go through. It may not go through. Silver surfer being in here the russo brothers have said that it's an interesting possibility something that they could explore in the future they also had something very interesting to say about the future of infinity war in general which means that so we have this movie coming out and that's going to be the end of a certain thing and then maybe the next avengers movie totally ends everything in the way that they looked at it is that it's going to be a decade-long comic book that has come out and now once that comic book run is over it's going to be an entirely new book john schnepp all of this stuff that we're now digesting, is it Silver Surfer is the headline to you, or is it the headline that we're going to get an entirely different book after we close Infinity War? Well, I think uh, the, the latter is what I'm thinking. We're going to get a different book. I mean, I think the Russos, already being comic book fans, uh, know that comic books run by writers and artists, and there's certain runs that you know some of us all know when you talk about a Walt Simonson Thor run, what we're talking about. It's like this is the Russo brothers run on Marvel, and this is Kevin Feige's run with these 10 years. Whether Feige's gonna be around for phase four, I'm guessing he will, but a brand new, like that's why these phases are kind of fun. We could look at it as like building blocks, and the Russo brothers are closing out the book on phase three. Whether or not we're gonna introduce the star, star jammers or, you know, a civil surfer or whoever it is going to be. A civil um, surfer. Yes, a civil surfer. That's he just, my, like, hangs out at yeah, courthouse. My all new that. character. He's like, yeah, he's a lawyer who's got superpowers, <laughs> kind of cosmic, uh, you know, legal cases. Anyway, um, yeah, I don't think the silver surfer is going to play a large part in this, even if he is in it. I think the Russo brothers left that door open. I mean, we're all going to find out in a week anyway, so we're just conjecturing for fun. Like, hey, did they stick him in there? Is there a scene like Howard the Duck where he's like sipping some champagne on a surfboard <laughs> in the back with a giant crocodile and shark chasing him whatever i mean whether or not silver surfers in the movie it doesn't really matter that much i mean it's not going to be a big intro i don't see it it could be an easter egg for all we know like they've easter egged a lot of things but it's with properties that they own like warlock or like certain characters like i mentioned howard the duck people are like what's up what's up with that duck people are like that's howard the duck silver surfer you know, by the time this movie comes out, I guess the you know the the legal paper has not been signed yet. Who knows? We're not lawyers, so I mean, I well, I don't think the Silver Surfer is going to be in it. But if he was, it would be lit literally an Easter egg. Yeah, Riley, if the Silver Surfer is indeed an Easter egg, is it something that is welcome to you, or is it just cramming too much into the MCU right now? When we have Infinity War, it's already a pretty packed guest list. No, I I think it's it's kind of like what Schnepp said. I think it could be an Easter egg, and that would be welcoming to me. It. I mean, this all started because Metacritic listed this whole cast list with all of our Avengers, and there's an actor that is Silver Surfer, said in the credits, Silver Surfer. Everybody's like, oh my God, Silver Surfer, oh, Fox deal, it went through, it went through. And they're, they're not denying it, they're just saying, oh, I don't think we own that yet. Right. But they didn't think they owned Spider-Man. They didn't think they were gonna set up some of these things. So I don't see it as a possibility. They've traded characters like Ego, the Living Planet, over to Deadpool, like to get some of those mutants in, in Deadpool, and then have Ego the Living Planet in volume two. So I think that we might see a Silver Surfer as an Easter egg to kind of say that we're, 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 we're having another long game because James Gunn said there's going to be more cosmic MCU, and what better way sure. than to introduce Silver Surfer? Or to freak everyone out, it's a post credit scene where it's like the coming of, I am the Herald of Galactus, and everybody freaks out. At the, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. it's Thanos reveal of Avengers, you know, 
But that's the kind of reveal where people will be like, who the hell is this? Well, that's Thanos. And then now we're 10 years later, like, or 12, you know, six years later after Avengers, we're all seeing that reveal. So this could be one of those situations too, where yeah. he set up in a post credit scene, the Guardians or whoever meet up with the Silver Surfer for the first time. <laughs> yeah, the Spider-Man issue was very different simply because the Spider-Man thing, they could, they, they could put in Spider-Man because they made a deal. Right. They didn't make any deals, at least none that we know about, right. because the, the Spider-Man deal was front page news when Sony and Marvel had this agreement that, yes, we can loan our character to you for these movies, but then we're also going to make standalone movies with the character that could or could not be in this world. With this one, there's this huge merger that might be happening that has not happened yet, and once the ink is on the paper it's going to take a matter of months and potentially years to get all that stuff finalized so i don't think that fox is going to be like oh yeah you're allowed to use silver surfer and then maybe you can buy us like no you buy us right. first and then we can start loaning you some of our characters but i don't put it past anybody to toss a little easter egg in there i think that's pretty harmless the bigger news to me is the russo brothers saying that okay so once we start phase four it's going to be an entirely different book which means that mm -hmm. a lot of these characters not only could get wiped out we might might not see any of these actors we've come to know and love in these roles once we hit phase four. Is that how you read that, Schnepp? Uh, it could be that way. I mean, I feel like, yeah, after the fourth Avengers film, a lot of characters are not going to be around for phase four. I mean, whether they retire, whether they die, I mean, whether they get transformed, whatever happens. Is that going to be a continuation of Infinity War, that fourth Avengers movie? Or do you think it's just going to be something that's totally different? Like, is Thanos yeah. going to be in that one? I, You know what? I'm I'm in the minority here. I, don't th I think it's a totally different movie. I think that while they were like maybe shooting both back to back. They realized they could put all of Thanos in this one giant movie and they don't need to make, have him be the, the villain of the second film. I'm not saying I'm right or wrong. That's what I just, I feel like the fourth Avengers film will be a totally different film. Wow. With a different villain entirely. I was thinking as well, like even before Fox, Marvel, you know, uh, Disney, before that deal, the Fantastic Four property has been on that fence where they're like, look, if you don't get some movie in development, we get our, our rights back, that could very well be a situation where they made a kind of a similar deal that they did with uh, some of their other characters where they're like, look, we're getting Silver Surfer and Galactus back in exchange for something else, wh which happened before the Marvel Fox deal, the Disney deal, you know, went down. They might have already said like, look, we're going to get Silver Surfer and Galactus. Maybe we don't, or even we already got Fantastic Four. We don't have X-Men or Wolverine or any right. of the other characters. Maybe they got the Fantastic Four back in a secret deal that we don't know about, and that's what Phase Four always was going to be. Mm. It's hard to tell, but uh, you know that's what I'd wager. So. Yeah, Riley. I mean, they, they've said that the uh, the title of the new uh, Avengers movie, the the fourth one, is not going to be revealed in the movie. Not even as a post credit scene. The Russo brothers have said that they want to give it some time. They want everybody to digest all of the carnage that's going to take place in Infinity War, Ooh. and then we're going to get a title way down the road. So, does that mean? Do you agree with Schnepp that it could just be an entirely different movie, and that could be the premise of that movie is actually rebooting a lot of these superheroes, or do you think that Thanos is it's going to be a two-part issue to take him down. It's hard to disagree with Schnepp on comic book stuff like this because I can totally see that happening. But uh, And the Russos came out and said the title, the reason we're not revealing the title Avengers 4 because it, it will scare you. It should scare you and spoil Infinity War. So I think there's a medium, there's like a middle ground happening. I do believe Thanos is going to carry over in Avengers 4. I do believe that Avengers Infinity War is going to be kind of Empire Strikes Back, leaving on a somewhat cliffhanger and then setting up something that is a new direction. We've seen set photos of Cap in his Avengers uniform. Why? That's, that for me is like, that could be a simple thing like, oh, my other costume got burned and I went into the museum and got this. That could be as simple as that. Or is there a time element? And they do go back that then changes into a reboot of the universe that happens in, and that's the story of Avengers 4. So we get a whole new direction off of something that carries into the movie from Infinity War. Thanks for coming to Smithsonian today. Uh, Thank sorry you. we don't have Captain America's suit on display because he came here earlier and had to borrow it. So <laughs> we borrowed Mark Riley for a little bit as we bid adieu to him and welcome in Christian Harloff. We want to remind you guys that we have our poll up on YouTube right now. If you're listening to us on the new iTunes feed, thank you for lending your ears to our show for about 45 minutes to an hour. If you're watching us live on YouTube, you can participate in the poll. And today it's a very simple question. What 
Fox character do you want to see in Infinity War? If any of them, you can vote on either Silver Surfer, Galactus, Human Torch, or Deadpool. And I want to remind everybody that this morning we had a new Infinity War vid drop, and that is the Infinity War Avengers Fantasy Draft. We had a bunch of our noted panelists, comic book movie enthusiasts, participate in a fantasy draft. They each got $15, and they had to draft their best team to defeat Thanos. It was a whole lot of fun. I merely got to host, and I enjoyed the heck out of myself. So check that vid out as we move on to our next story, and that is that Steven Spielberg is directing a comic book movie, and that comic is from the world of DC Comics. But hold on. This is not confirmed that this is going to be a part of the DCEU. The movie is confirmed. Steven Spielberg will be directing and producing Black Hawk, this movie that was teased ever so slightly in the first Wonder Woman movie, it is now going to be a picture that Steven Spielberg will be directing after he takes the reins on Indiana Jones 5 and West Side Story. So the earliest this movie will go into production is in the year 2020. Black Hawk is the World War II-centric story of a brave group of fighter pilots who take down tyranny. Christian Harloff, welcome to the show, and we welcome you with the Steven Spielberg news. This is pretty earth-shattering stuff, right? Yeah, sorry I was late. I was flying Allegiant. Um, I okay. was actually, uh, when I heard this, I had uh, didn't had never heard of it before. I didn't know what the hell Black Hawk was, but you hear Spielberg's name, and what is it? And the second you hear, Pilots World War II. Yeah, it sounds like Spielberg thing. Um, <laughs> so, you know, you put his name next to it, and I'm interested. It doesn't have doesn't matter that it's a comic book movie. It doesn't matter that it's a World War II movie. It's just because I want to see what Spielberg's going to do next. I think Ready Player One was really good. I liked it a lot. So, yes, I mean, I'm not, like, super excited, but I didn't break the internet or anything. You know, it's like to where we, we were like, oh, what's the big news? What's he going to do? Is he going to do Man of Steel 2? No, he's doing this other movie. Cool. Well, that's what Roca had guessed yesterday. It was just kind of funny timing because Roca was like, what if Sp Steven Spielberg does Man of Steel 2? And then <laughs> we got a call that Steven Spielberg might be doing a DCEU movie. Right. Do you think that this movie is going to factor in to the DCEU? Or do you think that this is just going to be a continuation of Warner Brothers not really knowing if we have a DC or a DCEU or what that exactly means? I hope it's not because I don't, I, don't, I don't think they need to do a DCEU. I think they're stronger when they just do standalone DC movies. I don't think we need a shared universe for everything. I I think that the DC has proven in the past that you know you look at the Nolan trilogy or uh, even like you know, Donner stuff or you know granted it was years and years and years ago but I think that you can make these movies and what, what are the, whatever they do with the Joaquin Phoenix Joker movie make these standalone movies we don't need everything to connect it's cool that it does but if it doesn't work I just want to see great movies I want to see good <coughs> fil filmmakers working with them. I want to see good cast I want to see good movies I don't need it to all connect not for this particular thing. Give but me a good movie. This particular thing it could be connected very easily to Wonder Woman, which is no. a very successful franchise. You, but yeah, but you, you get you get into trouble there sometimes, though, because it's like, well, they're both in kind of World War Two or World War One. Actually, is, is Wonder Woman. So it's, she's uh, every war. She's, I mean, yeah. she's every war since World right, War One. Right. She's right. going to be in the Cold War in World in in uh, Wonder Woman Two. What I'm so saying, you could is, potentially have her factor in somewhere. You could, but it's like, but by that you could, like you just said, she's she's in everything. She, she's she's been around for so long. You could. Connect her to any new movie that you do it's uh but because it's spielberg and because it's the second it's second war i don't know I, I just think you get you get dangerous what if we then connect it here and then we can connect it to the suicide squad and then we can connect it here and there it's just like right now that particular model for them is not working i think that the other model is just do standalones because they have a lot of great properties uh doing standalones is nothing new to steven spielberg he also is pretty good at building franchises maybe not adding himself into an already existing franchise right. so schnepp do you agree with christian that you would rather see blackhawk be more of a standalone kind of movie or do you like the fact that it has the potential for interconnect activity with other DC properties. Um, neither here nor there, to be honest with you. I'm happy to hear that Spielberg is going to do Black Hawk. Black Hawk uh, is, was a very popular comic book when it came out during World War II. I mean, it was outselling Superman, Batman. It was like a big, you know, the Black Hawk Squadron. If you saw Sky Captain in the World of Tomorrow, that is a, something a very similar kind of ode to Black Hawk. Um, but I don't think Spielberg will stay in black and white. I think he's going to be making an action serialized film. This is kind of a way for him to make a brand new Indiana Jones for the other team. Like, obviously, Indiana Jones is for Disney, Marvel. Uh, you know, that, I mean, it's not Marvel, but it's that Disney world, Warner Brothers. It's not like he's picking sides like Marvel or DC. It's simply 
the material spoke to him. It's like, oh, you know what? That'd be fun to be able to do kind of an action serialized thing with planes. He hasn't really done that yet. I haven't seen a Spielberg film outside of 1941 that no one right. really wants to see again. So this is a way to get back into playing in the World War II zone and have fun with it, not do something like Schindler's List, which is an important film, but it's very serious and not an action you right. know, adventure. So I think... It, it sounds great to me. Like, yeah, we're going to have to don't, you know, get too excited. You're talking about like, it's probably going to come out in like 2021 or 2022. Um, whether it's going to be part of the DCEU or whatever, DCFU, whatever you want to call it. Um, uh, That's what they actually I mean, call it. You know, and people always make fun of me. They're like, oh, why are you call it DCFU? You're it's trying to say FU yeah. is like the people, that's websites. Look it up. I didn't come up with it. <laughs> it made um, me giggle. Yeah, but I love saying it. <laughs> um, so the DCFU, uh, Wonder Woman, it would make sense if they, you know, if she's still Wonder Woman by, by the time that 2020 rolls around and they're still doing this shared universe thing, throw her in there, man. It would be great to have her cameo. I mean, you don't need all these other characters, I and mean, you specifically don't need Steven Spielberg to like cram in the, the World War II CO Suicide Squad or whatever crappy ideas they end up trying to throw up. They already have an amazing idea. It was created by Will Eisner, the guy who created the spirit, a fantastic comic book creator. Check out Blackhawk. Howard Chaykin did an incredible run. Look that one up. That was from the 80s. Blackhawk, Howard Chaykin, eBay that shit. Is this the most anticipated Steven Spielberg movie you guys have on a slate right now? Or would you still rather see? If I put you at the Cineplex and right. you can either go see Steven Spielberg do a movie called Black Hawk or you can go see Indiana Jones 5 or I'll throw West Side Story in there too. Right. Which Steven Spielberg movie, which theater are you walking into? Wow. You know what? I mean, after Crystal Skull, I feel like they're making an apology makeup movie with this new Indiana Jones. But uh, I'd honestly be more excited to see Black Hawk. To be honest with you, you think he's wrong? No. Oh uh, yeah, I do. Indiana Jones is. I, I think because of the first thing that he said, I don't think he's wrong. I think that's just his, his opinion. Uh, no, you what, said he's wrong. Yeah, well, what do he wants to see? It's just that's not. That's wrong not what I. From that's Christian not what I want. I'm wrong. About. Right. Right. <laughs> exactly. You're, you're wrong. That's not what you want. You're watch. wrong. You're, that's yeah. not what you want. You want to see a sequel to 1941. That's, right. um, that's exactly what I want. Okay. <laughs> so remember that. Uh, with with the monkey from Crystal no Skull. No monkeys. I no more monkeys. Uh, but no, he. Uh, I that one is not because I don't know enough about it. I, and to me, I want to see. Because of exactly what he said, Crystal Skull was such a, a fart box that I, I want to <laughs> I want to actually watch a um, new Indiana Jones that they can say that's it, that's the way we wanted to end it. No more of this silly nonsense. This is the act. This, remember how I made you feel during Last Crusade? That's how I'm going to make you feel for this last movie. And you bring up the Indiana Jones in the Last Crusade. Yes, yeah, Steven Spielberg has played in the World War II sandbox a lot right. with a, a, you know a hard hitting drama like Schindler's List or Saving Private Ryan. He has done aerial combat around World War II, and that was in Indiana Jones yeah. in the Last oh, Crusade. Right. There's a great aerial combat scene uh -huh. in there. Indiana Jones, fly yes, land. No, another Steven Spielberg property that is in the news right now is one that he is still executive producing. He directed a little movie called Jurassic Park way back in 1993, and now the sequel to Jurassic World, Fallen Kingdom, has its last trailer dropping before the movie hits in June. John Schnepp, because I know that you watch this trailer and you see this movie, and you and I are checking this thing out in our pre-production meeting, and there's one little thing in the trailer that bugs me, and it's just this plot that we're going down that... Right. We're we're gonna we're gonna grab these dinosaurs and we're not just militarizing them yet, we're using them as fodder <clears throat> yeah. for super rich people to bid on. And it just seemed like all of a sudden, for that 10 second or 15 second clip, that this stopped being a Jurassic Park movie and became The Purge, yeah. where you just have a lot of rich people bidding on stuff. <laughs> I did not like that yeah. part of the trailer. A lot of the other shots I thought were pretty cool. Yeah. It's got dinosaurs, it's called Jurassic something. I'm gonna wanna see it, but my anticipation level has not reached the fever pitch like I wanted to. Where's yours at? Well, I think <clears throat> we, we were talking about it, and uh, I was not a big fan of this trailer. I was like, let's weaponize the dinosaurs are just like it just but uh mark riley kind of put it in a, a good perspective for me he was like look i like these you know these dinosaur movies and these things it's like a b movie but it's just a bigger budget and i was like that's a perfect way to look at this especially this um where it's like you know it's it's gotten so corny now that it's it's kind of like oh you're watching it. it's like the ooh i'm creeping in to eat the little baby girl with my it's like it's corny to me i mean i watch this and it's like it's not it's not cool to me anymore it's like goofy but with like oh they have a bigger budget it's like you might as well have a guy like behind the curtain like yes i'm turning the the weapons are on the dinosaur oh don't look at me with a weird weapon i put it on the raptor so it could look around like the predator it's like snidely whiplash yeah. mustache but like with fast and furious i can acknowledge those being fun 
B movies yes. because we didn't start at this exciting Oscar winning revolutionary no. movie place. We started with the I live my life a quarter mile at a time. It's like, okay, we can make these movies into something more fun. Jurassic Park, that was a high bar to hit. And now Jurassic World, I thought was fun. Right. At least this one, it just seems like we're wringing too much out of the mythology. Jeff Goldblum coming back, I would have been a lot more confident in it if he hadn't also come back for Independence Day Resurgence. Right. And the thing I hated most about this trailer was seeing B.D. Wong as like this snidely whiplash bad yeah. guy where he was like a good person in the first Jurassic Park. He wanted to genetically engineer dinosaurs and have this nice zoo. And now all of a sudden, he's just this mustache twirling villain. It's uh, Why is this bugging me so much? Because it, we've already seen a bunch of this. It was called Jurassic Park 2 and 3. Mm -hmm. I mean, the third one, I mean, we, it, we've already watched this franchise diminish. It, nothing will take away from the amazing first film, Jurassic Park. And that's why Jurassic World was such a cool thing. We got to see the park realized. It felt like, oh, 20 years later, they did the right thing. If they were going to sequelize it, they just went back and kind of did a remake, but with all the things that we wanted to see in the first one. So, oh, the park did open. We knew it was going to be a disaster, but we got to watch it happen. That's part of the excitement of Jurassic World is it took elements from the 20 years ago, or plus years ago from Jurassic Park and made that happen. I mean, you look at Jurassic Park 4, that's what you've got now, that idea of weaponizing dinosaurs, dinosaurs running around with weapons, or like, we've merged these two into a weird, like, alien creature or whatever. It's like, and we get the very same scenes from Jurassic uh, Park 2, where the dinosaurs are looming around people's homes. It's like, it literally is just borrowing from stuff that's already been made. So to me, I'm not that excited. Now that I've seen this full trailer, I'm less excited than the trailer from before. Yeah, I mean, you, you make a great point. And, and Christian, I want your take on this too, is that this movie feels like Jurassic Park 4 as opposed to Jurassic World, because Jurassic World, the, the benefit that Jurassic World had was the benefit of time, was that a whole generation had passed since Jurassic Park opened. And you can allow for future generations to not learn from history and make the same mistake that we did so many years ago because, oh, well, now we have better security and we have more high tech, so now we can do a park with dinosaurs. But once that park gets ruined again, it kind of seems like we have to wait a whole other generation before we can do another one of these movies that have any credibility. Yeah, I, I, unfortunately, when I watch this trailer, I just feel like they're blowing it again. Um, and I'll see the actual movie. I hope that I'm wrong. But what they set up, and, and I didn't hate Jurassic World. I know a lot of people who hate that movie, uh, regardless of how much money. I thought it was fun. I thought it was a fun movie, but I, I, thought, they, yeah. I thought they set things up into that movie, that when, especially when they announced J.A. Bayona coming into it. Because you guys are right. It does feel like a B movie with a huge budget. Um, but I thought they were going to do more. I, I was always, they were leading it towards it was going to be almost like Planet of the Planet of the Apes, to where, it, essentially setting up what Jeff Goldblum says in the first movie, and that's that uh, evolution will take over, and that is what should have happened. I think like they set this whole thing up, and then now not just make like you said with the rich people, and maybe that it eventually does happen in this movie where the dinosaurs actually kind of take over everything, but the dinosaurs should. I wanted to see a world maybe like five, ten years later where Chris Pratt and everybody are trying to survive, almost like post-apocalyptic type stuff, to where they're running around all over the world, to where the world is uh, is almost like uh, I Am Legend, where sure. everything's kind of growing, and, and you see that the dinosaurs are coming out. They could, they could, you might see that in the third one, though. That's maybe, a great idea. I'd maybe. love to see that. That, that would be, that's kind of what I... That's a pretty dark way to take Jurassic Park. But Park gotta go though. that way. But, that, but that's my point. <laughs> but my, my point is, where else do you go? And the other right. thing is, the answer to that question, where else you go, is here, and that's regurgitated stuff that we've seen already like exactly what he just said all the stuff in this trailer is two and three it's the same stuff we saw into the end of two when they show up and now like you said they're weaponizing the dinosaurs in a silly way as opposed right. to as opposed to this way where they're dropping in dinosaurs to like take out their enemies and then that backfired on them and because they dropped all these dinosaurs in you know whether it's somewhere whether it's in the middle east or wherever it is and and the dinosaurs took over the entire thing killed all the our soldiers killed all their soldiers <laughs> and now they own that part they're there and they've evolved there and it takes over like Jurassic World that's what I thought they were setting up and it just seems like the same old crap that we're getting and just like summer movie right. popcorn movie spend your money don't worry about it because it's what you said the first one wasn't that at all the first one had way more to that it was revolutionary as far as the special effects and everything too but there was more too it was based off a really good book um so yeah, I, I, 
I hope I'm wrong. I hope the movie's great, but it, it, it just seems generic. But Jurassic Park was still a it was still a family movie that you can take your family to. Like I would hesitate to say the Planet of the Apes, the new franchise, is like a family movie. That's more of an intense yeah. drama. Right. And you're right, that might have been the most serious place to take the lore. So, but if I'm looking at this from a I hate to say it, a studio marketing perspective, this is the right way to take. Jurassic World. If you're trying to make summer I'll, dollars, I'll disagree. I'll, because I think that even if you, because because even, look at you make it pliable for families. Yeah, but the problem is it's not families. You just think it's people getting eaten. Is it more more friendly to be to like a PG-13 audience? I think is is what you're saying. I think right. that that like in in a certain aspect, sure. But the problem is that is that worth hurting the validity of the franchise? Well, one, your idea though, I love that idea. Uh, Asylum, if you're watching, Jurassic Planet is the rip-off movie that you should be making right now, but take Harloff's idea, <laughs> throw it in the desert, have like seven dudes, you can make it really cheap, but like, you know, like literally video cameras right. and seven dudes and like add some dinosaurs attacking some kind of, you know, Middle East thing. And then, I mean, what I think you're saying though is like, if they were gonna go that route, they'd have to get rid of the main stars because you can, those guys don't fit into what your story. Well, maybe you know? because the question is like I always thought about it too. Like how if like how would we have survived like billion whenever billion years ago when the when the when the dinosaurs were around? How would we have survived? And the question is, with all that we didn't have any other technology that, that we would have had, and and how would we have done? We would have been eaten, and yeah. we would have tried to survive some way. But now, how would we survive with the technology we have? Although even that stuff would start to get overrun because whatever might happen with them chewing through cords or, or whatever it is. We're, like, we're riding pterodactyls like, come on! Yeah, like throwing, and you know some rocks. maniac would try to nuke them and then that would ah. that would be a problem and then they, they they're, there's they get smarter because of the gas that gets into I, see, their heads and, I, and start see, talking. That, that's where, start the, that's talking. where the studio would go with it, and I think you don't need to do <laughs> stuff like that. because like, when they Put start the bazooka getting, on the T-Rex. Yeah. I like that's the right. first movie when the raptors are smart because of the way they can connect with each other. That, yeah. to me, was enough. Then they started like doing these, well, they mutated another dinosaur, and it's a mixture of this. And that's like, no, you don't need to do that. The T-Rex alone is a scary thing. Yeah. But like, you put a T-Rex as in, in like, you know, what was it, the... Uh, uh, the 12 monkeys right like that what the future looked like in 12 monkeys and if you were running around in that city with all the the tons wheat, of dinosaurs and then there's dinosaurs that you gotta you know, about, forget and, it and 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 all these things like a, a mountain lion at one side oh let me get away i'm, I'm okay i got away from the mountain lion uh oh a t-rex just ate my head uh it's like that <laughs> that where's that movie oh uh, mr dna where have you mm -hmm. gone? I don't want to. I don't want to seem like I'm like totally down on this new movie because look, there's a lot of cool shots in the trailer. I'm gonna get a huge bucket of corn. I'm gonna be excited to see a Jurassic World movie. I just think that you know, and I even said this when you're walking out of Jurassic World. I really enjoyed watching that movie, but I don't know where you take a sequel, and I still don't know where this sequel is taking us. But I'm probably gonna eat a lot of popcorn watching the movie. Well, there is a utopian society where uh, humans and giant creatures can exist in peace and harmony and that is in the movies how to train your dragon one and two and now how to train your dragon three not only has a title we also have a synopsis the title is how to train your dragon the hidden world as opposed to like jurassic world or the fallen kingdom this is the hidden world and universal is the studio releasing it they also gave us a brief synopsis as to what we can expect in the movie as Hiccup fulfills his dream of creating a peaceful dragon utopia, Toothless's discovery of an untamed, elusive mate draws the Night Fury away. So basically, Toothless is going to chase the mass, and then we have to really see what Hiccup is going to be able to do when all of the other ones are away, and then if there's an attack at home. So I kind of like where this is. This story is going because this is this is Toothless as a dragon, kind of discovering what his his purpose as being a dragon really sure. is, which is meeting somebody that he's attracted to, and then Hiccup fulfilling his. <laughs> promise of being a leader of people and not just somebody who can train a dragon these movies uh they, they they crush heartstrings they crush the critics and they do very well at the box office this one is slated for release in march of 2019 christian i just gave you the premise and the title you on board with how to train your dragon yeah but i'm, I'm more so on board because of the reputation of the first two um like the, the, the third one is it sounds Cool. What, what can you really judge off of that? Now the first two have not been bad. With the same, had been bad, and with the same premise, I'd be like, eh. Um, but they've delivered on the first two really right. good. The question is not just he, him going off to find a mate. Is this going to be dragon sex? I didn't go that route. Oh, but when right. on the on the at the end of the second movie, he was the alpha. He was the he was the main dragon that right. they. So that's going to also cause some problems. This is like who? So who's going to take over if he takes if he takes off for a little bit and he's off having his little uh, dalliance? Right. Um, it's a so, nice way to put it. Yeah. So a lot of heaving and hawing and sweating. Yeah. It's a kids' movie. 
John Schnepp, what yeah. do you think Chimes. about dragons making so, love on screen? It's a child's they, they're going to the hidden world. <laughs> That's right. The secret place. It's a movie that kids watch. Yeah, yeah toothless. The secret garden. Yeah, the secret hidden world of dragons. Infants <laughs> yeah. won't watch this movie. I don't know about infants. Maybe know. not. Um, you know what? I now was the second, the second second movie, movie where they went to the hidden iceberg place where the, all the dinosaurs were inside Titanic? that ice. Wasn't that the mm -hmm. second movie? Yeah, it was the second movie. I thought the second one was not as good as the first oh, one. Oh, I love the second one. But I liked both of them. You're like, wrong. <laughs> see, I'm wrong every time I say my opinion with Harloff here. But uh, yeah, you know what? I'd love to see the, a third movie because uh, yeah, the first two were great. I like particularly loved the first film. I thought the second one was fine. Um, you know, if you, this feels a little bit similar story wise to the second one. Only now, Toothless is going to get a mate. So you know, cats got to you know hang out together. Like they do design these dragons to kind of emulate cats instead of dogs, which I'm a big fan of. I love both animals, but I'm more of a cat person. So for myself, <laughs> Toothless going on a little hidden world adventure. I'm all in. Um, Toothless is going on an adventure, and we have one more story to get to. Then we're going to save some time at the end of this show for your live Twitter questions. Let's go ahead and start tweeting us right now at Collider Video. <laughs> <clears throat> Use the hashtag Collider Movie Talk, and we'll get to some of those. We have one last story, like I mentioned, and that is the following: that Maleficent has a sequel. It's going on board. Christian, get excited because the villain in Maleficent is going to be played by Ed Screen. Screen, I believe it's Screen. Ed Screen. 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 Ed Screen is going to be in right now. He's in final negotiations to join Disney's Maleficent sequel. Angelina Jolie and Elle Fanning are both returning, and Pirates of the Caribbean: Dead Men Tell No Tales director Joachim. Ronning is going to direct. Details behind Scrine's villain role are currently under wraps, but production is going to begin later on this year. John Schnepp, going to go to you first, because huh. Christian doesn't seem that excited to talk about a Maleficent sequel. My big question to you is, uh, it's a Maleficent movie, right. and Ed Scrine is going to be the villain. I thought we were... We, we had a villain, right? And, well, and I thought that you need a name bigger was and badder villain for the villain to then be fighting against. I would say, uh, what would be... Uh, Yen Sid, the super, the super wizard, the Disney spelled backwards is what this, 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 this it's a real villain. He would be great. They haven't <laughs> really introduced him yet properly in the any cinematic world as a live action villain. So I'd love to see them go with that. And that way they could start to bring in all their other characters like Maleficent and a bunch of other characters to team up to fight this super evil wizard. Uh, I have no idea what they're gonna do, but I didn't hate the first Maleficent. It wasn't horrible. You're wrong. It, it wasn't, <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm wrong again. But I- Schnepp, 0 for 3 I today, know. wow. Oh, I don't know, guys. Um, So yeah, like, I didn't hate it. I. Didn't say I was loved it. I didn't hate it. Either. Yeah, I mean, I'm I was, with you. But I, was, I didn't think it was a giant garbage problem. I was like Maleficent, what up? Like throwing up when I got out of the theater. It just, you know, I'd never thought I'd be like, yeah, Maleficent too. Am I gonna see it? I don't know. But it, uh, it was an okay movie. Yeah. But the problem I had with the movie is that they took the character of Maleficent, who we know from Sleeping Beauty, is just a scary, nasty being, and they yeah. they, they put things in Maleficent that I didn't want, like a heart and yeah. a soul and sympathy, and I felt some empathy for the character. So Christian, here's the <laughs> here's the gateway. Here's how I sell you on this movie, right? Mm. Is that Ed Scrin comes in, and he is whatever baddie that maybe Schnepp's describing, somebody else, and then Maleficent gets corrupted by this person, and that is how we get the Maleficent that we see in Sleeping Beauty. Beauty, how's that work for you? No, too late. Uh, yeah. Let's talk about Scryon first, who I think is a really good actor, and I think he was great in Deadpool. I think he was good on Game of Thrones. Um, even that stupid, horrible movie that he was in, in, in the action film that was garbage. He was Hitman. Hit, no, it wasn't Hitman. I mean, yeah, that's, it was not, Hitman. that's not the movie I'm talking about, oh. though. He was in some other film that was But stinky. he was a Hitman. Maybe. He had to shave his head. I don't care. Um, <laughs> the point, point is that Scryon is, is really good. He really is. A transporter? Is that what it was? That's something else. The transporter. Who it was cares? a Jason Statham movie. What, what, whatever. Yeah. Point is that the guy is good. Um, but no, I, I, I never want to see a Maleficent 2. The first, the first movie, it's not that it was necessarily crafted as a bad film, but it, let's just not skate over that it just made you feel for her. It destroyed all of the mythology altogether. Like, you look at what they've done well in Beauty and the Beast, um, Cinderella. Um, what was the other? There was a third one that they did. Would all. you see Snow White it, and the did, Huntsman uh, Beauty and the Beast again, very well. or would I you said see Beauty and the Beast. Maleficent too? Yeah. What, say that. Again? Would you see Snow White and the Huntsman again, oh, or would you rather see Maleficent? I didn't too? hate the, the Huntsman as much. Um, it, the, the second one was an abomination, but the, the the first one, I'd probably watch the first one again because Maleficent. I just my daughter just discovered the original Sleeping Beauty and has been watching it. There's no redeeming that character, and even when what what you tried to do with that character, right? I said, okay, that's fine, but then. 
everything else inside of it. The king was an imbecile, and he was a and he was a douche. He wasn't like in the first movie. He's not the the the, the fairies who are so great in the original movie who have all this personality are morons. All three of them morons, and I don't know how they're. I mean, it's it's like it was. It felt like all the focus was supposed to be on Angelina Jolie. That's was the issue that I have with it. Even with El Fanning, who was fine, and Sleeping Beauty was. They had this relationship, but it was like, look at me. I'm the movie star. I'm Angelina Jolie, and here's the movie. And it made a lot of money. There's no doubt about it. So I understand why they're making a sequel. But it it just. I think the same reason that Alice in Wonderland was not the best is because they stayed away from all the core stuff. You got to change it. Like Cinderella changed some stuff up. Beauty and the Beast changed some stuff up, but it stayed true to the core. The Jungle Book as well, yeah. Jungle Book. Jungle um, Book stayed true like, to the core. Like Alice in Wonderland, I just think it's a tougher live action adaptation to, to just because Alice in Wonderland has a lot of annoying characters. But it was a sequel though. The difference was Alice in Wonderland. Mm -hmm. No, 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 you're not wrong, but the, the difference with Alice in Wonderland was they didn't try to do it over. They did it as a sequel as if the thing that we already saw in that original 1955 version or whatever it was, mm -hmm. all that had happened and then Alice has to go back. That's but whether it had worked for you or not, right. the point is they didn't mess with the original movie. Yeah, uh, you're right. But I mean, even if they had, like, there, there's very few live action versions of the Mad Hatter that I would care to watch. Oh, what are a, you saying? That's she, mustard. Don't be silly, Lemon. That's different. Snap, you can call him wrong anytime you want. Ah, Christian is 100 percent right. Guys. <laughs> Thank you, Don. Snap, where's the mouse? Uh, the Levinson. mouse is over in the corner. Okay, we don't let's know eat when him. that movie is coming out, but the first one made over is 750 million worldwide. So they did something right, and you're gonna wrong. Be another one. I don't think I'm wrong. Okay. I'm just reporting the news here, Mr. Hatter. And all new Collider Heroes is going to be up on the channel later today, hosted by that young man right over there, John Schnepp. What are we talking about? Well, Matt Hatter, I, I want to, I want, I want some of your opinions on it. We're going to talk. Sure. About, we're going to talk a little bit don't about. Don't show me um, on camera. Just listen to my yeah, voice. We're going to talk a little bit about Avengers Infinity War. Have you heard of that, Matt Hatter? Sure. I was in a war one time with a teapot. That's right. And we're also going to talk about uh, uh, Superman. Uh, Action Comics and More Than Thousand is coming out today. Uh, we've We've got a very special guest. The guy who plays Adam Strange is going to be showing Strange? up. Strange? I love strange things. Strange is your middle name, Mad Hatter. So if you haven't checked out Krypton, check it out. We're going to get into that. Crypto and, media? It's crypto fantastic. So check it out. It's coming up later. <clears throat> we also have our Infinity War Fantasy Draft, as I mentioned, and an all-new Schmodown. I, I hesitate to ask this point. Yeah, Stop showing me! Uh, Matt Hatter, did you hear that there's another live Schmodown on June 2nd at the El Portal no, Theater? Are you excited done. about that? He passed out. <laughs> oh, come on! I set you up so perfectly! No, Adam just showed me and ruined it. Adam ruined it. Oh, my God. Damn you, Chris, good. Good. tell ruined us more it. about this Schmodown! Right. Stop, show, stop showing me! Well, it's been a great dress rehearsal and movie talk. Tune in when we actually go, oh, we are actually live. We're live. Uh, we do have a Schmodown <laughs> to announce. Yes. It is a live. Match at the El Portal the Theater. Picture, two matches. Very excited. You got Star Wars, and then you have a huge team match. It's going to be between Team Action and the Shire Wolf. Tell us about it, Harlow. All right, so we've got two pictures, and I'm sure Adam's going to show the pictures. Perfect. He doesn't have yeah! All right, so we have a triple threat match between Ken Knapsack, Joseph Scrimshaw, and Alex Damon from Star Wars Explained. They go head to head to head. The winner gets to play Sam Witwer Woo! for the Star Wars Championship. That goes June 2nd, 7 to 9 p.m. at the El Portal Theater. Get your tickets now at schmodownlive.com. And the main event, the Shire Wolves, Clark Wolf and Rachel Cushing battle team action. Ben Bateman and Andrew Guy. Once again, schmodownlive.com. Get your tickets now. Shire Wolves in the house, they're son. They're going to destroy them. And uh, by the way, they're going quick, the tickets this time. Very fast. Yeah, very excited about that. And check out all of the great podcasts that we have to offer here at Collider Video. The Movie Talk feed is not just Movie Talk. It is also Afterthoughts starring Ryan Snelling and Jay Williams. They give their take on all things Collider. It's a fun recap show, not just of Movie Talk, but of all the cool stuff happening around these parts. And now we move on to live Twitter questions. You can tweet us anytime at Collider Video. Like I said, use the hashtag Collider Movie Talk. Our first question harkens back to the Jurassic World debate that we had, and it's from Steve. And he says, would you watch Jurassic World 3 as a post-apocalyptic, a quiet place type of movie? How does that sit with y'all? That's kind of what I was yeah. hoping for. So, yeah. I, 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 but, you know, you could even say a quiet place could be like Jurassic Park 3 out in the country. But I would rather see, you know, people in, 
in the city trying to fight raptors. It's everywhere though. That's yeah. kind of what I think Jurassic World yeah. is. Global is that, dinosaur takeover. It's everywhere. Over. It's yeah. like you don't you you're not safe. There's a, maybe, maybe there's a zone where you're safe. Maybe they're they're able to build like one particular place to where you're safe. But even then, it's like. They just keep coming. Well, if they're going to make a Jurassic World 3, they're probably going that way. That's why they so. introduced that secret cabal of weirdos who are, like, bidding on, like, you know, stupid genetically right. changed dinosaurs. I hope they change it. How many humans do you actually want to see survive in a post-apocalyptic world? Because I get bothered when there's too many humans that are still around. Like, I like my post-apocalyptic movies more like I Am Legend mm. than something yeah. like Book of Eli. I like Book of Eli a lot, but that's a lot of humans that, that survived whatever happened. I like I Am Legend because that's one dude and a great German shepherd. And it's like, we don't even know if anybody else is still alive in this sure. world. But let's progress. I mean, the, th the point is, like, like, if you want to do more of these movies, instead of to end that way is great. Maybe that's the... the the, the, the fifth one. The fifth one. But it's like, get me to a place where there's a group, and then by the end of it, there's the, you start off with it because the, every whether it's Walking Dead or all these shows, it always starts when everybody's gone. Right. Well, also, um, what is it? World War Z. They started to show kind of how like like something like that. Sure. Show me where everyone's around first. Everyone sort of gets picked off. Twenty eight like, days later is a great yeah, one. Those are, yeah, those like we're really not winning this pockets. Thing. The dinosaurs yeah. are winning. It's like this is why it's called Jurassic dinosaur World. pockets. I just yeah. feel so bad for Dr. John Hammond if that happened though, because it was just his vision. He just wanted to make a nice, fun little zoo, and yeah. that was his fault because yeah. every he wiped out the world. He wiped yeah. Out yeah. There's a here. big statue of him, and then dinosaurs were roosting in it. But that'd that's be that's kind of my point with the with the Planet of the Apes thing is that they it's the same thing is that they try to do this good in in the new Planet of the Apes movies. James Frank was trying to cure. Alzheimer's, yeah. you know, and it's like, and yeah. then when we get to what ultimately happened is that if you look at everything, that's ultimately what ruined the entire world. I mean, that that it, it, it put it into humans and it killed all the humans. Yeah, you know? did ultimately cure Alzheimer's. No one remembers. Like it, it, it did actually work. Yeah. It yeah. Yeah. did actually work. So <laughs> give it another shot. Senor Pizza is next up, and he says, "What are some movies that you consider overlooked?" Or underrated for him, he says uh, "Broken Flowers," which I would agree with Bill nice. Murray. Great in that movie. You have any underrated movies? Movies that have been overlooked that you want to throw out there to the kids? I'll Empire chuck Strikes in, Back. Yeah, Empire Strikes Back. Most people not named oh. Tom Holland have actually. I'll seen chuck it. in Duncan Jones' Moon. I love talking about that film. If you haven't seen it, it's uh, it was his first feature film. It's a very small cast. You know, just one guy on a moon. First so, Flash Gordon. He says it with all seriousness, and I'll back him up. He's not oh, wrong. Geez. He's not right. wrong. Yeah, it's. Uh, I, I don't know if it's overlooked or underrated. I think if you've seen I it it's as a kid, you might appreciate Planet it. Planet of the Dinosaurs. I would say a movie called Puncture that stars Chris Evans, mm -hmm. a pre-Captain America, or it was like right when he started playing Captain America. It's a courtroom kind of movie. It's a legal battle movie. I love a good legal battle flick, and uh, this one is great. Brett Cullen, great in that movie as well. Check out Puncture. You got one? Yeah, I do have one, actually. This is an underrated comedy that kills me every time i saw it in the theater crushes me especially when you do the research and find out what the joke is windy city heat yeah windy yeah. city heat don barris incredible windy city heat that's so worth one, that's underrated dude, and a lot of people don't know about I it i would sign off on that wholeheartedly act mm -hmm. it is such a funny movie it yeah. is and also if you if you, you, know, you know, see joke. it without you know knowing the, the behind the scenes story and then read about it and see it again i yeah i would say read about the joke first really yeah because if you know that because i think it makes it but it's funny either way because you're like how is this guy that dumb i think windy like, city heat sets it up pretty well it that does this but, is, but you should read about the joke too because, it's because, because nobody believes it making yeah. nobody believes it at first because right. and then personally knowing don barris and knowing perry uh, it's scary real, Perry. Yeah. scary Perry. Yeah. It's it's real. It is yeah. totally yeah. real. Windy all the way City through. Heat. Yeah, yeah it's check out uh, Windy City. It. He's not point. wrong, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. He's Legendary cameo by uh, by James Price in there as well from the mind. Bob oh, Cat Goldthwait rocking. That was one in yeah. act. Yeah, Bobcat Goldthwait, great in that movie as well. So check out Windy City Heat. We have one more quick question to get to, and that is from Alan P. He says, "When do we get any new info on Star Wars Episode Nine? Is it too too early to be asking yeah. that question when yeah. we're waiting for Solo to that, come out? That's the answer. When are we going to hear something? Um, we look. just heard something this morning. Uh, they, they got their first uh, deep, uh, first uh, uh, first unit DP is a, a black lady. That's so cool. it's our first black woman DP on a Star Wars movie. Awesome. So I thought that was great. Yeah, that's good. Well, I mean, we're gonna as far as like story details and things of that nature, yeah. not for a little bit. I mean, I think Solo will come out. The aftermath of Solo, then the, the Blu-ray. Well, this is the first year that we're gonna have two um, Star Wars movies come out on Blu-ray in the same year. Um, wow! Right. So we're gonna have. I think that once you get to December, JJ might do the same thing that he did in, during his first run. He might show a little teaser um, in. 
December or, or, or November. He might not, um, but I think that they should, considering that Episode Nine is not. You can't do with Episode Nine what you do with Han Solo, like wait like th two months before right. the movie comes out, because then Star Wars Celebration will come out in April. I believe that it's going to be in Anaheim this year, and. Um, and yeah, so it's, I think that you're going to start to get a lot of stuff by the end of the year, and then the beginning of the year, it'll, it'll amp up, and you're going to have a heavy push. I just hope they're not as secretive this time. I know that's what J.J. does, but it's unnecessary. All right, well, the uh, Victoria Mahoney is the young lady's name. She's going to be the second unit director for Star Wars Episode Nine. She had a tweet that came out that said, Cat's out of the bag. Thank you, Ava, referencing Ava DuVernay, for putting my name in the Star Wars Lucasfilm hat. Thank you, J.J. Abrams, for inviting me on your ferocious ride. This one's for the outliers dreaming big in small corners of the Earth. Hashtag may the force be with you. So that is some good news as we close up shop here on this episode of Collider Movie Talk. I'm going to be at the Hartford Funny Bone this weekend in Hartford, Connecticut. Connecticut. Just Friday and Saturday, you can get tickets at markellislive.com for John Schnepp, who is always not wrong, and Christian Harloff, whose Mad Hatter is always dead on. Thank you guys for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow for another episode of Collider Movie Talk. Bye bye. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, everybody. Mark Ellis here. Thanks for watching this episode of Collider Movie Talk. You want to watch more? Then click up here, or you can click right here for more great content from Collider. And if you haven't subscribed to Collider Video, do so right now and share this vid with your friends. Thanks for watching.